All right, so let's jump over to the running back side of things. I don't think it's really any different than what we kind of led the wide receivers off with. I think you got a top couple of guys, and then throughout those guys, it's a little bit of flavor, but probably not as much. I think it's, it's I think most people kind of have it stacked up in one way. But after that, I feel like whereas I'm pretty excited about all those receivers that we just talked about all the way down to where we got to with Mechie, you know, it's a it's seemingly anybody's guess after, you know, RB three and maybe even that now is somewhat of a question. So let's jump into it. We got Angelo here still. He's hanging in with us. Check him out, Angelo underscore fantasy on the Twitters. Also head over to his website, AngeloAnalysis.com. Got a bunch of profiles up there. Uh, got tiers and rankings and uh, prior year stuff. So you can go back and get your get your fill, man. A lot of, a lot of good stuff going on over there at AngeloAnalysis.com. So make sure you check him out. Back to the running backs. So Brees, that's it. That's that's clear cut. I think so. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy this year, man. It's Brees Hall and then the rest. Uh, I have mm. him in, in my uh, tier two, tier one's Hall of Fame guys. Tier two is your all pros, and Brees Hall is in that vein. It reminds me of a combination of like Kareem Hunt and Matt Forte. That's not bad company, obviously. Mm. Um, I I don't think we have to spend too much time on Brees Hall. He's no. a he he might end up being a first round pick in the NFL draft. If not early second round, he's going to make yeah. an NFL team very, very, very happy. Um, three down back and you know, good receiver, really good between the tackles, has home run speed. Not much to talk about there. My my RB2, though, this is the one that we talked about before the show. This is where it gets interesting to me. It's Pierre Strong Jr. Ooh, some heat um, off the off the jump. Yeah, I, I, I love South Pierre Dakota Strong. State. <laughs> Yeah, he's, the only, one, he, he's the only back for me in my tier three, my my potential Pro Bowl guys. He super high analytics score, second high, second highest analytics score in this class outside of Brees Hall. Guys, I mean, he's a he's a stud, and he's gonna be in a wide zone scheme. Um, hopefully, Atlanta, Tennessee, um, would be great for him. Miami Dolphins, but he's someone that literally on any given play can can score. Yeah. Um, look at it. We did his freshman year, nine and a half yards per carry over a, like a thousand yards, 11 touchdowns. And what I love about him on film is a, he's super economical as a mover. There you go. Boom. Um, two, he's a really damn good receiver. Yeah. And we saw that at the, I think it was the shrine bowl, shrine bowl week. When you watch the practices on one-on-ones against backers and safeties, no chance against him. Mm-mm. Varies pace and tempo really well. Um, we saw him split out wide a bit too um, as a jackrabbit and, you know, win against safeties and linebackers. Obviously, he's division one double A, same the NFL, same the SEC. But he's someone to me in the right situation, he can make an, a Tony Pollard like impact on an NFL organization. And I think that's what he is. Um, I'm really high on him. He's got my third highest film score. Um, second highest in totality when you combine both, but I think he's a phenomenal player and someone who I don't think we're talking enough about because he has really everything that you would want to see from a small school player. The biggest thing you want to see is you want to dominate. Mm-hmm. Nine and a half yards of carry, eleven touchdowns, over a thousand yards on the ground as a f- true freshman. Yeah, pretty dominant. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about a guy for his career. You know, seven, I think seven and a half yards of carry. Also, four and a half yards after contact, like mm-hmm. per carry, like that's a pretty right. damn good number. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he does a lot of things that you that you want in a wide zone running back, and I think he's he can be a phenomenal player in the right situation. I think he goes round three, round four, um, but kind of like Tony Pollard did. So I think that's going to be an interesting thing to look at in the NFL draft, and he's someone in second round of my rookie drafts I'm taking all day. Um, Walker's the next one. So hold on a second. So that's yes, a good go point ahead. right there, right? So that's he's your second he's your second running back in this class, yeah. but you're not going to be taking him until like the second round. No, no, no. You're I'll not be gonna, taking him in. Because you don't have to take him in the reach, first, but you don't you're have not to reach. You're going to reach above the average uh, person, yes. but you're not going to you know just go crazy. A reach appropriately. Right. Um, if, if Kenneth Walker gets second round capital, I, ex- I fully expect Kenneth Walker to get better capital than Pierre Strong Jr. fully. But I think Pierre Strong Jr.'s impact as a receiver is what 
sets him apart. Mm -hmm. On film, I actually have Walker like less than a percentage point higher, mm -hmm. um, but they're really close. So I would I'm cool with taking. You know, Kenneth Walker, if it's round one, I'm taking Kenneth Walker. But if it's round two, Kenneth Walker's gone. I'm taking Pierre Strong Jr. Yeah. I'm taking Pierre Strong Jr. over Isaiah Spiller every day of the week. Um, I hot, like Kenneth Walker. fire yeah. right there. I, I, like, I like Kenneth Walker a good bit. Um, Isaiah Spiller is an interesting one to me because this is kind of like the Miles Sanders debate that everyone was having in 2019 with Miles Sanders versus David Montgomery versus Josh Jacobs. The allure of Sanders was physical traits, right? Great in a straight line, hit a home run, had a lot of trouble with fumbling, had a lot of trouble, you know, with his receiving. We've seen that carry over the NFL along with the health issues. Miles Sanders is probably going to be on his way out in Philly. Like, it is what it is. I think. Spillers in that same mold in terms of upside. I think Miles Sanders had Pro Bowl caliber upside, and I've said that many times. But I think the issue is, is he going to be in a spot where he can succeed? And is the NFL going to view him as a three down back, which he isn't, which is the issue. I think he's more of a Kenyon Drake type of running back, where it's a, you know, Second, you know, secondary option in the NFL offense can be a producer in the open field, get him involved in the screen game, give him space, give him his touches, um, and de develop his overarching like cognitive skill set. Cause that's where he kind of struggles, right? He struggles as a decision maker. He doesn't struggle with his movement tools. He's a mm -hmm. he's probably right now on on tape, he's the best mover in the class, the position in terms yeah, of his toolbox. He's got a pretty but, vicious jump cut. Phenomenal. But he really struggles in a couple key areas. He struggles to make decisions. He struggles to to chain things together economically. Um, there's a lot of wasted motion with him. Um, but also I think a big one is the durability. That's one trait that I think we don't talk enough about is we just think of durability as like just injuries, right? When you watch him play, he comes out of the game a ton, a ton. Well, like I like to watch full games when I right. evaluate prospects um, just to kind of see where they're at in the flow of the game. The, yeah, that's a, so underrated, the flow. Yeah, of I think it is. Yeah, and when you watch him, it's like, wait, where'd he go? I think it's just well, he leaves he the runs, crime scene. He right? runs so fucking physical, man. Right. Like yeah, he's so, so violent. It's, His it's movement tough. is violent. Everything he does it's, is violent. Exactly. So it's kind of tough because it's like, oh, it's like, okay, you know, he's on the sideline for a bit, comes back in the game, but like that adds up. Yeah. And you don't want to lose opportunity in the NFL. When you lose opportunity in the NFL, you lose touches. Um, that might be more so a me thing, but I. I'm. I still think he's. You know, a, he can be an above average or average NFL running back. Um, but I would take. I would take Strong Walker, and I'd take Rashad White over him. Uh, I, I think those are guys. I think that project better to today's modern day NFL. Yeah. Um, and being more than like a spot producer in a sense, where like a Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake's a good player, mm. too. Like it's not like it's not like a bad thing. Right. I mean, Kenyon Drake. But I don't think Isaiah Spiller is going to get the first late first round capital that everybody was thinking. No, definitely not now. Mm -hmm. He might not even get second round capital now. If he falls to the fourth round, there's something kind of going on there. I don't think he'll make it out of the third. I mean, I doubt it. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's a right now. I think there's so good. good there's too much upside. Yeah, there's too a ton of upside, upside from uh, all facets, and I think he can do more than just be like a third down back, right? I mean, yeah. Well, He's, before we get to let's pause on Rashad White because I definitely want to talk about him a little bit more. Let's sure. uh, just recap go back to real Walker quick. and let's Pierre just, Strong. Just re, yeah, let's just recap real quick. I, so I would go Brees Walker Spiller, and then I feel like once we get to the fourth running back, up for debate. You want to throw Pierre Strong in there? Hundred percent fine with me because I couldn't tell you exactly with conviction. Who to throw in sure. there as as the fourth guy? You want to throw Rashad White in there, well, or is this Amir White? But I, I wanted to go back to Spiller a little bit um, in the fact with the comparison of of um, well, Miles Sanders. Go ahead, real quick. Spiller, Miles Sanders. Keep that thought. 
in, it's t- in ter- terms of the conviction, my, part of my issue with Pierre Strong is, is similar to that of Christian Watson. It's it's like how do you really evaluate that guy? Like there's there's no all twenty twos that I can find. There's there's like one highlight tape. There's there's one eight minute highlight tape and a three minute highlight tape. And then there's like UC sure. Davis and North Dakota State. You know how how can sure. you properly evaluate that guy and have him as your second guy? That's I, I got. I almost want to hear more, but we've gone all over the map. We got a lot of stuff to hit on. I don't know. I just no, sure. and, and you talked about the you know looking at the target share versus him and Walker. It's only one percentage point off. Like Walker's five point four, which is in the thirty four percentile, mm-hmm. and Strong's in the six point four, which is in the forty third percentile, or something like that. So it's not right. you know Walker didn't catch that many less balls than Pierre Strong. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I just I'm, man I gotta go with my man Walker you know like you said you got him number two and maybe we don't want to have that debate back and forth I don't know I just sure. I almost want to hear more about why you like Pierre Strong so much and how, how you came to it you know I, I don't know yeah yeah I think the biggest thing is when you look at like you said Christian Watson the thing about Christian Watson is he's really produced at that high level right fair you know and that's the that's the thing that's is you the look big at difference a, when you when you look at a guy and like it's just that he dominated school, those that, he has that, to dominate. Right. And that's like Christian Watson did. didn't dominate. Pierre Strong dominated for multiple seasons. And that's a bigger deal for me is when we're looking at a guy that projects into a wide zone scheme in the NFL, similar to a guy like Elijah Mitchell, Chase Edmonds, guys who are wide zone backs, they can be really successful in the right environment. Mm-hmm. Right. And for me, looking at Pierre Strong Jr., and looking like lining them up, taking the logo off the helmet, what does he do that Kenneth Walker doesn't do? What does he do that Isaiah Spiller doesn't do? He does the same things that those two guys do, but a lot more, like a lot better from an economical sense and just a timing sense. He seems to have that niche in a wide zone scheme. I think Kenneth Walker is going to be – a better pure runner in the NFL or has a chance to be a better pure runner than Pierre Strong Jr. But I think Pierre Strong Jr.'s ability to be an actual weapon as a receiver is important. We yeah. see the target share very pretty similar. Absolutely. Which people but, really, really are crushing Kenneth Walker for the target share. You know what I mean? I and it's I don't not really that care far about off. The target share. Okay. More so looking at the usage. I don't like, really either. I just know that yeah. people put a lot of stock into it, and I can find a million ways to be like, man, this man, you watch Kenneth Walker at the combine, the hands look fairly soft. Like he can't catch. He's an elite yeah. level athlete. He'll figure it the fuck out. You know, like plenty <laughs> yeah, of backs sure. have that didn't catch a ton of balls, but you know. For sure. But, no, no, you're right. I mean, it, it's just too like looking at. Like, where'd they win? Like, Pierre Strong was using the slot, one yeah. on the slot. Pierre Strong, he's on angle and option routes, one on those. That means he might have that same skill set and toolbox in the NFL. That is the NFL. That's the NFL running back route tree that you want, right? You want, and you go back to the Minnesota tape with Pierre Strong Jr., catches a seam ball, breaks tackle, touchdown. Yeah. Like, this is, like, he's used in every level of the field you want a running back used on as a receiver. He's used on angle and option routes, on screens. He's used in the slot. So he has that versatility part of him and multidimensional skill set that Kenneth Walker does not possess, which is okay Mm -hmm. because Kenneth Walker's going to get higher draft. Right, I was about to say. And the the difference is is that the opportunity that's going to be afforded to Walker early that we're expecting is – you know, going to probably vault him into potentially right. being a workhorse role, whereas Pierre Strong's probably going to have to work himself into a workhorse role. Now, some people think Walker's just going to be a one, two down back, which maybe he will be. But I think he his opportunity to be a three down guy will come quicker than yeah. uh, I, Pierre I, Strong's opportunity to become a three down I guy. Agree. And I don't need Kenneth Walker to run all those routes. I just need Kenneth Walker to catch two or three balls a game and we're right. good. You know, right. I, I agree with you. And I think it's, it's also two landing spot where they go. I think, you know, one of these guys going to the Bills. That's you think so. I think one of these dudes is going to the Buffalo Bills. They cannot keep operating with Josh Allen as their primary goal right. line option. Not going to work with them being a franchise quarterback. Oh, I would be devastated if it was Walker. So they I are mean, strong, though. The, I don't you know what? I think the best situation for Pierre Strong is probably Atlanta. Tennessee or Miami wide zone type scheme. I think being the heir apparent to Henry is, is interesting. 
Um, but like Atlanta too, we saw how successful healthy Cordero Patterson was in a wide mm-hmm. zone scheme for crying out loud. Yeah. Draft a back who's that's his niche that I think we're, we're talking wheels up for Pierre strong, but it's not as simple as saying, okay, draft Pierre strong over Kenneth Walker. Right. I would never do that. Right. Right. I'm not an idiot. Sure. Okay. If, if you have, if you, <laughs> if you have better draft capital than this, you know, if you have better draft capital than player B, then you should probably draft player B over player well, A. Well, I don't know this if I necessarily agree with that, but I agree with not drafting I think so. uh, I mean, Pierre I think over. In, I think in some I mean, Jonathan where, Taylor. Jonathan Taylor was the third back off the board. I'm not taking him as a third player in the draft. High, but you know? still high capital. Sure. Second rounder versus first back. Sorry, not second rounder versus first rounder. Literally last pick of the first round versus early second round to me is much different than fourth than round. Second round versus fourth round. If there's yeah. three rounds of, of difference, then sure. Yeah, that's a lot more variability. I mean, for me, like Edwards Hilaire and Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan Taylor was still for me Hall of Fame right. caliber talent. But you could say early career if you're a contender, hey, Clyde Edwards Hilaire doesn't look too bad. And he had a hell of a first half of his rookie year before he got hurt. So that's not bad process in that sense. But I think it can't and be bad And the landing spot was so oh, just, dude, oh, gosh. Juice. Yeah. Yeah. Andy Reid, the Brian Westbrook comparisons, Patrick Mahomes calling Andy saying draft Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Yeah. All that stuff was. Nick Saban was, saying that that was the fire. hardest player to prepare against was Clyde on the whole LSU team. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and we'll never know. I mean, he the thing is too, like he had a first half rookie year was really good. It just keeps like, getting was, hurt. Yeah. He was on his way to he was literally on his way to winning offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. Like, that he was he was doing really well. Um and was a fancy RB one. But, you know, he got hurt. So and then Jonathan Taylor, the projection with him was he was gonna come on later. Um then Edward Slayer, and he did, and now Jonathan Taylor is, in my opinion, the best running back in football. Got to yeah. take him number um, one in your dynasty draft. All right, 100%. I derailed the fuck out of that. You yeah. want to get back to no, I'm not, we're, we're skipping and, it. No, that's we're skipping it at this point now. That was a good let's discussion. Just, that was great. Let's, let's run. Let's go to Rashad White. Let's uh, let's skip to Rashad because, I, like I said, I think it's those. Th- I think it's the top three guys, and then I think if you want to put Pierre Strong as the fourth guy. Completely on board with that. Can't argue with it. And if you want to in put terms Rashad, of which running back you're drafting in a rookie draft, like right, in the, an in, order in the next tier below those guys in the next. You can't for, change for my me. man's Angelo's tiers, but well, no, I'm just saying I'm giving my tier. I'm saying like if you don't oh, want, fine. if you take those three guys, I literally could put Zamir, Rashad, Pierre Strong in in as the next guy and be okay with that. I'm probably. I don't know if I'm taking any of those guys in the first round of a of a rookie draft. No, probably um, not. But once I get into the second round, I feel pretty good about him. And I actually feel really good about a bunch of the rest of the running backs. Um, they're, they're fun, but they're, you just there's a lot of yeah, but. Uh, and you got to take most of those wide receivers. Right. The wide receivers the seem three RBs seem safer and, and a little bit more fun. But there are some some good options in here. Pierre Strong being one of them. And then Rashad White, uh, another one that you said you thought was more set up for uh, the modern day NFL offense or I'm not sure how you yeah, wanted that. No, but. no, exactly. I think that's it really. I mean, like I, I like Rashad white, especially analytically. I think that was, yeah. he scored really high there. Uh, I, I had which, the what are you looking period. for analytically when you're evaluating the running backs? Cause there's, you know, target share is one of the big things that I know a lot of analytical people are really hammering. You said it didn't really matter that much to you. So I'm curious just real quick, what what it is you're looking at analytically for a guy? Just production right, so for, in terms of production, I guess. So there's a couple of metrics I look at usually on on AGS when I when I created it was looking at hey like I want to just find the most predictive things, roll with those. And for running back, it's really it's five. There's five prongs really. Experience just a production instead of age, age experience. So freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, um, college dominator. Historical production is a rusher. Um, BMI. Um, and receiving production and workload. So those are those are the elements that I use on AGS to kind of dictate, hey, you know, how high does this guy score analytically? Um, and also I use bonuses for AGS in general. So like if let's say Rashad White is in the 96th percentile for any of his grades, he gets a like 1.5 bonus. Because you're one of those leagues that, that has the bonus points. That's where they get you. Yeah. The bonus points. Yeah. So like guys like 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 guy like Jonathan Taylor like hit so many bonuses. Like he's Hall of Fame tier. Like mm-hmm. that that's how it that's how it works. Like Kyle Pitts last year. Like guys like Pitts, Chase, <laughs> sure. Like those guys were 
at the top of the top of the list. Um, and Rashad White, it's a little different with a guy like White because he spent some of his, his first couple at junior college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he so seems like a guy a, who's been disrespected just about his entire career. I think so. And it's, it's interesting because, like, so it was funny. I was watching an Arizona State game, not for him, but for uh, – uh, Demonte uh, Trainum, who now is a linebacker, um, <laughs> but Rashad White kept catching my eye in a sense where I'm like, this guy's just pretty good. He's good. Like he's just a good NFL. Looks like a good, solid NFL running back. And it's funny on film, I have I have Spiller higher on film than I do uh, than I do White. Like I like Isaiah Spiller. Like, I don't dislike Spiller. I have, you know, my film grade on Spiller is 35.12. Rashad White's is 32.12. So I have guys ahead of White on film. Analytically, you know. Yeah, he's, he, he's hard he's, to beat. He smashes. Analytically, and so, yeah. And that, that's a big deal. So And had um, a great combine on top of that. He did have a great combine, great size productive receiver for me here reminded yeah. me of a carry on Johnson type player where his hands were he, soft, man, which yeah, some people he, are going to scoff at that, but let's not act like the people that didn't like carry on Johnson coming out weren't right on board with carry on once he hit the NFL right, stage. Right. And then, then he got hurt, you know, and but he, he showed good. that he was fucking good and, and he that was he was good. Right. Man. Like he was a solid, like, was he a upper echelon NFL back? No, probably but an overreaction. A, yeah. He was a average to above average NFL talent. That if he could have, you know, stayed healthy, he could have been a, you know, what a top twenty RB every year in mm-hmm. fantasy. Oh yeah, top so, fifteen. I mean, yeah, he went he, from Carry On Johnson to you gotta get him in your rookie drafts. Like it was like, <laughs> yeah, and he had or a trade for him and take him in your startup. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so uh, it's one of those things too. I got to like on like on Angel Analysis too on the site with AGS. I have the film and analytic grades because some people are gonna lean more sure. one way or the other. And I understand that. Like, I'm not just going to have, okay, here's your AGS score, throw it out, and that's it. No, like, I want people to make the distinction of what they're comfortable with. Like, for me, I'm a film guy. So, like, Mm. I'll use my film scores more than my just primary analytic scores. But I also use AGS as a compilation of those um, as kind of my, like, best process in that sense. Because I think analytics is super important. You can't dismiss it. 100%. It's a piece of the puzzle. It's a piece of the right? puzzle for sure. Um, and even if you don't like it, you know, even if, if it's not your thing, you still have to acknowledge the fact that it does drive value, you know, 100%. like it, it's driving players values. And if the analytical community gets behind a guy, it's going to not only drive his value up, but help sustain it, even if he doesn't perform. You well, know, right. especially from a production standpoint, I think that's mm-hmm. the biggest thing when you're looking at guys who are producers in college, highlighting that's really important because there's guys who just didn't produce at all. And those guys should be bogged down by that. Because yeah. if you don't produce in college, how can you produce in the highest league in your sport? Right. George Pickett's um, going to do it, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because, okay, so if you extrapolate his production, he's probably the most productive receiver in this class. Which is crazy. Boom, problem solved. Extrapolate. Um, I like it. Good word. Strong word. Um, that's what the master's degree does for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a piece of paper and fancy words. Yeah. Um, How many different ways can I say this? Extrapolate. There we yeah, go. Yeah, my wife gets so pissed at me because I was like, throw shit out. And she's like, that's a word. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Yep. yep. Definitely a word. Just said it. So sorry I said that. I should not have said that. I embarrassed myself. Scrabble from- champ, <laughs> Angelo <laughs> Fantasy. Don't don't get Seriously, on Scrabble with it. Don't fucking words with friends him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, no. You don't want no. that smoke, son. <laughs> no, we'll go out to a fucking bar and I'll be like, all right, you know, when we extrapolate, and she's like, stop. Like, oh, I can't sorry. even pronounce kinesiology or whatever. I, I can't it is. turn that off. Like, <laughs> it's really embarrassing sometimes. But you're yeah, not writing it, a term paper, Angelo. So, yeah, I know. So, it's a safe space, though. So I feel it's a very yeah. safe space. Hey, safe space, baby. <laughs> That's funny, man. But uh, so Rashad uh, White right up yeah. there with with mm-hmm. uh, below uh, above Spiller as yeah, far as the total yeah. grade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, I really think- close. And that's the thing. All these guys, I mean, dude, like Kenneth Walker's 54 to 52, eight first white and 52, two for like all these guys who are in the same tier. And that's why like, tiers are so important. Interchangeable. Right? Like take yeah. your pick. Right. Like Pierre Strong's actually in another, in a, like a separate tier than right. Walker, but he's only five grading points ahead. It's not like he's a whole tier. Like he's not 10 points ahead of, you know, Walker. It's more like, hey, you know, this is a guy that you should highlight in your second, third round your rookie drafts. Um, and that's a big deal for me. So, but um, 
but yeah, I mean, moving on from those guys, like Keontae Ingram is the top of my next tier. I love. He sounds Keontae like a fine Ingram. bottle of Italian wine, huh? Keontae, he's, he's, he's a stud. It's actually Chianti, and I like it. That's good. It's good <laughs> yeah, wine, it, too. See? It actually is really like good. It. It's good it wine. Is, uh, liver with some farva beans and a nice bottle of Chianti. Oh, yeah. So Keontae. Ingram, not a guy up on uh, a ton of boards super high. Right. So let's yep. tell us so about tell your us boy. About yeah. Ingram. That's Texas and then USC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Texas and USC. I think the one thing that kind of sticks in people's minds is like the John Robinson just overtook. Dude, but John Robinson is like Ladanian Tomlinson. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. He, he, come on, like, mm-hmm. right? Can't be mad at him for that. No, no. Um, but yeah, I, I think a guy like Keontae Ingram is a th- three down back. Love his size. Tested a lot better in the forty than I thought he was. Really good accelerator. Does a lot well. He's kind of that modern day bell cow back where you want him to do a lot of things well, and he does them all. He's a really good receiver. Um, runs the running back route too really well. Um, really good down the field as a receiver too. And that's the one thing that really sticks out in his game. There's not many 220 plus pound receivers at the running back position that can, you know, adjust and make difficult catches. So I liked him there. Really good in the open field. Um, good toolbox to mover. There's a lot to like with him as a late round flyer. I think he's going to be a fifth, sixth round pick in the NFL draft with the chance to be a producer um, high risk, obviously, because he's probably not going to be drafted very early. Yeah. He's not going to be a day two guy, in my opinion. Um, but those guys who are in that like riskier tier um, are all guys that might be drafted a little bit later. So your guys like you know Ingram and Kyron Williams and Brian Robinson Jr., Tyler Batty, like guys like that who you're like, you know what? He did something good in college. Like there's something about this guy, but capital. It, or do they like is their play style risky mm-hmm. like with ingram it's just capital like he has the play style to be a producer of the nfl um and one of a three down one at that but so keontae you know, is a guy that you for for you personally and mm-hmm. you would put your stamp on being kind of like a must draft late round guy for you 100%. you're gonna you're gonna yeah. go ahead and, unless for some reason he goes undrafted would that would that take him off, or or he would just He's be your last pick undrafted. or your first waiver wire pickup? Then you know I don't know. I've you know done what? this. It, I've it, done this for a long time. I've done, uh, evaluated yeah. these guys, and you think this sure. guy's going to go, and then for whatever reason, he's like the last pick or doesn't get drafted, and um, so I almost let the NFL draft kind of sort this out a little bit before I uh, really get it. That's why I haven't really jumped into Ingram because he's not super high up there. So I'm going to eliminate some work that I have to do by waiting to see what the NFL tells me. Yeah, no, that's a good point, man. I mean, I think it's, it's tough. Cause yeah, capital means a ton. It, and it also means like what NFL teams think of a player. Right. Uh, Cause they yeah. have so much more access to all this stuff right. than we yeah, do. So they have so many more, but they get it wrong all the do. time too. So, I mean, they fuck them. Well, and also too, you can't, you can't, you can't understand the player's psyche. You're not in their shoes. You're not, yeah. you know, you're not the bug on the wall. So it's you like, don't you get don't to talk to their coaches and yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So like, you don't know that stuff. You don't know how they're interviewing them from that perspective. But I think it's interesting when you talk about a guy like Ingram, because he he actually was pretty productive, not like an uber productive back, yeah. but he could be a guy like Alex Collins, like it, a good player, spot producer, primary backup. I like him. If he gets a if he gets a three down, like let's say a three down opportunity, he can probably run with it because um, he has a skill set to do so. And that's what I'm really looking at in that next tier of, of backs, like guys who can stick. Um, and those guys were uh, you said Ingram, uh, Beatty. Kyron, yeah. Kyron, yep. and yep. Robinson. Those, those yeah, are the- I had I had Ingram, Williams, ba- Beatty, and Robinson. Um, Robinson's an interesting one because Robinson's one. Devi, I took I took him in Devi drafts like three, four years ago, um, because he was I mean, he was pretty decent come out of high school. A and B, it's he a had a, and the, yeah, and the, <laughs> the funniest thing is his best skill set I had literally on paper. Um, I charted this like three years ago. He was a good receiver. He this year he had a good receiving year, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Fluid, I was, I was watching uh, Mechie yeah. tape trying to get some cutups and yeah, and and Robinson just popping off. Yeah, yeah. He's a, from he's, the receiving uh, standpoint, like like running with some routes, some option routes, catching no, the ball in stride. Stud, like, man, I, I think he's going to be an interesting one. Obviously, higher risk. Didn't pro- mega didn't mega produced. 
He did exactly what Alabama needed him. Like, you look at some of those game logs, like, it's like four yards, five yards, six yards, four yards, five. You know, he's just – but a lot of carries, especially this last yeah. year. And, and yeah, just, he's, a, he, he's a tough out, man. He's a guy that – I mean, he's going to run. Yeah. He's gonna run so it's not sexy, face. but it's fucking no, good. I, 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 he, he's a target for me for sure. Oh, for sure, because he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a touchdown guy. That no. that's gonna be your that's gonna be right off the jump. Guy. You can you want slam you him wanna, in there. Yeah, Buffalo Bills. You want your third round back? Go draft Brian Robinson Jr. Right. Yeah. That that's gonna be your guy. The draft in the third round brings you a different mentality. The yes, and he's what like he's an energy giver. Like th- this is gonna be the guy. This is what I say with Dave Montgomery all the time as a Bears fan. He's like he's not the sexiest back in the world, but he's a guy that you can you know. You can mold your offense around attitude wise. Now, right. so you're saying attitude, not necessarily game style, but like on, on off the field yeah. kind of attitude in the, yeah, in the locker just kind room. Of like, kind of. Right. And I think that's the thing too is like he's going to be a guy that's, he's just going to grind it out. Like yeah. this is a, this is your prototypical like energy giving running back, like your Chris Carson type back, mm-hmm. where it's like, you're just not going to want to tackle him in December. Marshawn. Like you're, you're just not going to want to do that. Yeah. So I would like him going to a place where he can kind of showcase that. I, I would love Buff- – Buffalo is kind of my de facto, please love a God, give Josh Allen less goal line carry spot. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a guy that fits that mold because he, Zach Moss isn't that guy. Devin Singletary isn't that guy. Matt Breida wasn't that guy. They just you don't want to use those guys, though. That's a mentality. That's a yeah. coaching – that's an and offensive that's, coordinator style. Well, they just also, don't want to do it. Dabble's gone, so hopefully yeah. hopefully that that changes a bit. But yeah. um, For the love right. of God to preserve your quarterback, like you're saying, just Seriously, get a please. little bit of a running game. And please. then – uh, one interesting thing, Robinson came out kind of surprised people ran a four five three, showing a little bit of juice on top of. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can, I have so many good things to say about Brian Robinson Jr. Like, I think he's going to be a damn good NFL player, be in the league for a long time. I mean, he's just one of those guys that's going to, you know, elevate your offense because of you know his mentality and his attitude. So Kyron Williams is kind of he was a hyped up kind of died kind of in that David Bell mold. Mm-hmm. Um, but he certainly died. doesn't check the uh, analytical boxes so much as uh, well. Maybe he kind of does a little bit, but not on David Bell's level. I don't believe. No, no, no. Um, so, you know, Kyron, Kyron is still fine with me. I, th- I think Kyron can come in and give you a nice third down roll. Uh, and I mean, I just rewatched some Kyron before we did this just because I thought we might get to him. And it's like he's got some juice, man. I don't I don't I, what he tested was was not indicative of what you see on the field. Like he, he certainly doesn't have the crazy long speed, but he's got juice in there and the receiving chops are fantastic. And he's a great pass protector. No, you're right. I mean, I think that's, and I was talking to one of my boys about this earlier. I'm like, you know what? The 40 yard dash and some of these tests, it's like the ACT, you know, <laughs> outdated. if you're, if you're bad at, you know, if you're bad at math, if you're bad at English, if you're bad at reading, whatever it is, is your form like, good for the 40? That's what's going to make the fucking difference. No, like, like did yeah, you trim like, down enough. It's, yeah. It's like a big, it's, it's a, you know, there's so many variables there. It's like, you know, like, like just like the ACT, man. Like yeah. if you don't score well, does that mean you're dumb? No, you might have not. to go to a tech school and then transfer to the one you want to go to, though. <laughs> right. You but might have a harder time. It's going to be a harder time, right? You're yeah. gonna, you're gonna, that's it's the gonna, same thing. It's going to cost you some money. 40, and man. same thing with all these testing. Yeah, like that's the one thing. Like you know, with these guys and, and like being in a uh, similar industry to that, like helping athletes prepare, it you need to kind of look at, hey, you know, this guy's ceiling in the forty yard dash is X. Dude, you know. Like we have a lot of technology these days where I can, you can run one 40 yard sprint, get your 10 yard fly on that. And I can say, okay, you're a four or five guy, four, six guy, four, seven guy, four, eight guy. Yeah. So it's like, don't run. If that, that's, I'm a, that seriously, like right. I'm his agent. I'm right. like, don't run. Like that's just me, me personally. Right. Is like, you're just going to lose money. Just be like, like, I got a little quad thing right now. I would like, rather just- have, I, <laughs> I don't have NFL teams like be like wonder. Oh, I don't know about his speed, yeah. But he looks okay. Then he's not fast. At yeah. All. So it's like it's tough because now he might the draft cap might be down. I don't even care. Down. I'll I'll still but give me I'm third round him. Kyron. Yeah, I, me too. I'm gonna draft him because he's a, he's good. He's good at everything you want him to do. Right. Like he is literally Giovanni Bernard plus. 
Had right. 42 receptions last year. Yeah, he's a good receiver. Sick he's grabs, receiver. too. He, yeah, he's a really good receiver. He's really good between tackles, good outside the tackles, not a good accelerator, bad top end speed, but he's productive. Right. He can be, you know, he is he just a guy? Yeah, but he's going to keep your quarterback upright, which is mm-hmm. important, too. He's got little he's got little things to get him on and keep him on the field. And then he's got some he's just got a little bit of the it thing that he figures it out. Like we were talking about Rashad White a little earlier and we use it with David Bell. I don't think this is necessarily where Kyron is, but it's like the the 40 year old dude at the Y who just always gets a <laughs> shot off like he gets around that guy like that. I think Rashad White, that's the perfect analogy. Like for whatever reason on film, it doesn't look like he's going to get around the guy. And then he almost always does. And they're like, how the hell does he? keep getting it, around that guy it's it's really funny because like i had him and david bell i actually yeah wrote, wrote down a note on david bell's film which is true to kyron williams he's a guy you look up when he has 10 and 105 yeah and you're like what the way what kyron williams a guy you look up he has six receptions for 55 yards of touchdown eight rushes for another like 45 yeah yards. you're like wait what like what just happened like this like that shouldn't be happening right now, but that's who he is. I think he's got just plenty of upside to get on the field, be able to be a flex start for you here and there, and then work his way into a, a pretty prominent role. So I'm fine with Kyron Williams. He's going to be a guy that's going to be in the NFL for a long time. And those guys I like taking shots on because they're going to help my dynasty roster, especially in a pinch. Like if I have Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry goes down, then I need a, you know, an RB three, RB four, who I know is going to catch four balls. Like I'll take it. Yeah. Um. It's kind of like how like I was like theoretic a few years ago mm-hmm. with the Lions. Yeah. It was like theoretic isn't that good, but he catches five balls. James White. Yep. James White. James White was literally like RB nine <laughs> at one point. Like those guys have yeah. value in the right offense. Um. But I think Williams will have sim. I don't know if they'll have that high a value of James White because James White was kind of like the pinnacle of the pass catching back. Sure. Um, He's the one that gets but, thrown out every time. So, but yeah, because yeah, I, th- I think it was that year when um, uh, Michelle went down, and then White got the three down roll, mm-hmm. and he was twenty plus points again. Just Tommy, just boom, 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 boom. Right, exactly. And McDaniel, and that, that can happen yeah. with Williams. You just need someone to. They just like a lot of offensive players need someone they can rely on it. Right. Yeah, I mean, maybe the fucking Patriots snag up Kyron Williams with some like capital. Oh, please don't tell me that because I, I have a lot. Of, I have some Ramondre Stevenson. I love so Ramondre like, and Harris. And Damian, like, yeah. <laughs> Man, that'd but be that tough. would be a total Patriots. Hey, so, move. so why no? Why For is sure. Tyler Beatty not getting any love? I, it seems like he's, he checks a lot of boxes. He looks good on film. Just doesn't seem like he's caught any buzz. He checks a ton of boxes, man. I mean, I think strong with last Beatty, name. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Look at you. Um, that's a he's a good back though. It's like he's a he's just juice. He's gonna be a yeah. He's not gonna be a three down guy. I mean, he's certainly a not slight. Didn't really produce before his senior season, but his senior season, dude, he had a name. How many backs have had over 1600 yards and over 50 receptions in a season in the SEC at that in the SEC? How many he scored 18 touchdowns in the SEC? Like he's not a he's not a bad player, obviously. Analytically, he's one of the top guys in this class, but it's the NFL might not see him as that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the toughest thing at running back is running backs kind of tough because i get receiver if you produce done you're a sure day one or day two pick that's yeah. how it's always been right like even Did, if you don't produce if you run fast as shit like remember darius hayward bay jacoby mm-hmm. ford yeah oh, like those guys Brashad perriman kevin okay, white first round pick oh kevin white don't do that to me no. i know i was i i was a big <laughs> kevin white guy that was injuries man the injuries were yeah, that's Is that micro fracture surgery oh well, he had a ton of stuff going yeah. on but um but yeah i mean it's like with backs, it's like, are they going to fit my scheme? You know, are they are they going to protect my quarterback? Yeah. Or you know, can yeah. they, can we develop him to with, you know, you know, be a good route runner and be reliable for the quarterback? Like, there's so many different factors there beyond just production, right? Um, so it's like it's tougher, but, but Tyler Tyler Beatty is one of those guys where it's um, he produced. So yeah. can he produce again in the right situation? He can. So, um, but like, I don't know when he's going to get drafted. Right. Like he, he, he could go in here from the fourth to undrafted, in my opinion. Yeah. Which is that's tough. Fair. Like that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. is what? tough. Like when we're talking like Pierre Strong earlier, I think the latest Pierre Strong gets drafted is the fourth round. I think the NFL yeah, understands like this. You're, you think you're, you're safe enough that the fourth round will be, you know, as late as they 
let him slide. I, th- I think so. I think so. Yeah. So we haven't talked any Georgia backs, no Cook and no Zamir White. Where do they fall for you in the grand scheme of things? It's funny because I like them both, and for different reasons. I like James Cook in in the mold of like, hey, you're you know, Giovanni Bernard type guys mm-hmm. um, who are going to be you know these are productive NFL players. Kyron uh, or pretty- Cook. Um, on film, I have actually Cook on film. Um, I think he's a little more dynamic than Kyron. He does everything that Kyron does, but the pass protection part of it is where Kyron really shines, Mm -hmm. and that's what NFL offensive coordinators might really like. James Cook has good genes. Genes, baby. Great Levi's. That that matters. Um, True religion. What are great genes? Like true religions or uh, (laughs) maybe Gucci or something? uh, True religion and Gucci. I love that you just named both those. <laughs> I was those trying to think of what the hot jeans are. I don't even know. <laughs> Dolce and Gabbana, <laughs> 300. The, the, the jeans is Dolce too, but they wasn't 300. That's funny. Um, but no, man, I think I think Cook and White are interesting because analytically they, analytically they both stink. Like These are guys yeah. that are – like because that, that was such a bad committee, Kendall Milton too, like just not great. But right. I think if you look at that, you watch Georgia tape – James Cook was the best back. And Cook's going to get capital, I think. Cook will get capital because of what he, the position he plays. He plays and the third. And, and jeans. G- Jinkos. Yeah. Jinkos. Um, yeah, he, he plays the third down role. He's going to be slot, slot him in there immediately. Teams will be probably less hesitant to slot him in there than Kyron um, because they want the more dynamic prospect of the two, in my opinion. Uh, that's what I graded on film, too. Um, but a guy like Zamir White graded out to me higher than both those guys because I think Zamir White can be a 10-touchdown guy in the NFL if he's yeah. healthy. Zeus. If he's healthy, the if he's healthy part is the, the question. But, but he is, right? He's not coming off an injury. He just had a couple of them. He, and <laughs> right? The thing is like, yeah, and the thing is with those But that was his too, senior year of college, high school and then his freshman year. So he's like years removed from that but you know you got the Todd Gurley yeah. Nick Chubb kind of thing lingering yeah in terms I think it's of- more so like the nature like I, I believe it was a, a lumbar injury lumbar spine um but it's like that's tough because those can linger throughout a career especially Samir had a spine injury uh lumbar I believe let me take a look at because so I know he I tore each that. of his ACLs that was kind of what I was referring yeah. to uh uh-huh. but yeah if, uh, if there's some more uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's, you know, it's, I think ACL, um, you know, back issues. No, actually, you know what? I think you are correct. I think the back issues were, were actually, let me look over this what, down. Actually. Now, as like a, as a, like a really young kid, he had, uh, I think he had kidney surgery. Uh, he, he had a rough upstart just to make it into this world and, uh, and then, right. which kind of in and out of hospitals his whole childhood and right. like prepared him to rehab an ACL tear after rehabbing an ACL tear. Yeah. So it's, it, it's tough, man. I mean, it, it, and that's he's a difficult. Lot of, so you have a higher grade on him on film than you do James mm-hmm. cook or you, you got yeah, cook grade. I do. Yeah. Cause I think it's like a 36, 35, like not a ton of variance. She's there. five, three. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where it's, you know, he's, he can play a role zero in the passing game though. I mean, he's legit zero. Hey, but caught some nice balls at the combine, had some hands. He's, he I mean, can he's do it. Z- he's no, he'll like, figure he's, it out. He's, he's, they he's had James Cook, he's but James Cook didn't even parent. catch that many balls though. Did he like, uh, uh, no, that's well, the weird thing with cook is like, it's like, he's yeah. really, really slated as this great pass catching player, which he, he, he looks inevitably like looks like it, but it, really the production wasn't really there. And I, you know, you kind of cited it in the beginning of this is like, it's just a very strange mix of whether it be yeah. from injury and, or, you know, however their game flow, however they were using those guys, just n- nobody really got anything. I guess he uh, did have 27 receptions this past year, but 16 a piece the two years before that, but it wasn't yeah, like I mean, normally you want to look at, I mean, like 30 is kind of the number I think for, yeah. For college running backs, like that, that's a good number when you see a target shares in the 66th yeah. percentile, though, right? So that you know, catches right. don't necessarily mean high target share. It's how many targets were going around, and and right. and so. Um, for me personally, man, I, I when when I flip on the tape for Zamir, that's somebody that when it just comes on, it like that guy looks like an NFL running back. Like it's just I don't know how else yeah. to even really say. It. Like it's like when you go from watching Rashad White to Zamir White, Rashad White looks like a guy who. I think could come on as a as a kind of a specialist, a, a change of pace guy, and maybe work his way in. Whereas I think 
Zamir is going to come in and be your first and second down guy, potentially could be right away, because I think he's got some juice. He's got some power to his game. He's got some elusiveness. You just like you said, the, 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 the pass catching maybe isn't isn't there uh, that we've seen yet. But I just you're playing in the SEC. It just looks like he's ready to cut and paste into a professional scheme. Um, so I, I feel pretty comfortable taking Zamir with the caveat of, hey, there's a, there's some ACL issues there uh, that, that, you know, probably drag him down a bit. But he'd probably be my fourth running back off the board. But, you're, you know, you, you make a str- – Pierre would have been fifth or sixth, and you've made a pretty strong case to, you know, hey, I don't, I don't mind, again, slotting him in as the fourth. I can't really argue against you. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just – kind of again when we go back to hey like where are these guys gonna get drafted like yeah that's a that's a tougher thing is we just don't know that yet so um the nfl will, will tell us capital and like how we can assess these guys and like what they look like on film is one thing but you know does the nfl think that you know Keontae ingram looks as good as i think he looks yeah maybe right. maybe not and so we'll We'll probably I mean, find that out like soon. You made a good point with Collins and, and Chris Carson, I think was a seventh round guy and like got drafted. And he was a guy that I really liked and was a sleeper for all of them. Right. And then he went in the seventh round and you're like, eh, but you throw him on the team anyway. And then it's like, fuck yeah. He, he went and got in there and did exactly what you thought he was going to do. And, and you know, right. every Those couple of draft matter, cycles, man. you hit that. Um, yeah, and, and who, sure. who's going to be that guy. And, and we haven't mentioned, uh, Algier or Pierce or Kennedy Brooks yet? Uh, how do you, any of those guys uh, uh, really stand out to you? I, I think I kind of like Pierce a decent amount. Yeah. It seems like the NFL kind of does too. I think um, so too. I think he might go in the fourth. I think that's going to be an interesting one to look at because he's just dude, just mean. Like yeah. I mean, he's one of those guys like like Brian Robinson, like a Zeus White. It's, it's going to run really hard and be an identity part of like part of an identity of an offense but has shown receiving chops as well so some of what some of those other he's guys an interesting yeah he's an interesting prospect I, I i haven't had i didn't grade him on ags yet he'll be the next batch of guys probably coming out tomorrow but i think um he's a he's a player i i like like mm-hmm. i like pierce um i like pierce a good bit um algiers interesting i think his capital kind of suffered after the combine um i think he might be a day three guy now there's a couple other guys like Jerry on Ely. Mm-hmm. Um, That's the old miss guy. Some of those guys. Yeah. And like he might more so a specialist there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting class. It's a deeper class than I actually thought it was initially. So, right. Um, right. They're, everyone they're, is coming to that conclusion because everyone yeah, was just it, been shitting on this class for no, over yeah, for a sure. year now. Because the high end running back talent doesn't get you that excited. But we just went through a ton of guys that like who like like you said, the, the capital is going to matter so much. And then like some of these guys are going to get tossed up and some of them are going to get tossed down and still be Elijah Mitchell's of the world. Right. Um, and, yeah. And some of them You're are going to be just bus and uh so who's it gonna be but so you know I, I, pierce would probably be up in that list for me out of any of those other guys we just named i haven't really watched any kennedy brooks um see what the nfl says about him um if that's worth me and i haven't really watched too much of the old miss guy maybe just watching some corral games yeah no yeah yeah no for sure i think you know ely's interesting too it's just uh hey, will he get drafted yeah, like, that's the right. that's kind of the question. Is like we don't we Kevin don't Harris is of the world. I know that he's hot yeah, and heavy so right now. He's as... the one with he's the one with uh, with the lumbar issue, I believe. Actually, okay. it was it was it was Harris. Um, but yeah, it's just like we just don't we just don't know what we don't know. So right. there's a lot of backs that could be drafted that are that are late day two or late day three guys. Um, but so who are just, your later round guys for the, to, to wrap this one up here? Like who's your, who's your guys that you want? I know you said we t- we hit a couple of them there, but mm-hmm. um, bring I them all say, bring them all home for us. I would say probably that the the one is Ingram, the one that kind of separates himself from the pack is Ingram. Yeah, um, I just think he's the one that has the the greatest ability to be a three down back if given the opportunity. He's going to be a guy that some's have to get hurt. Yeah, like um, that. That's gonna be, you know, he's kind of in that mold of like Alex Collins or Andre Stevenson. Like, good player can stick around the league for a long time. Will he ever get the opportunity to be a, a starting running back in the league? I don't know, but I do think that he 
has the capability to do so when called upon. So he's the one guy for me. He's like the one I'm not leaving a draft without him guy. Love that. Love it. Um, Jerome Ford was a guy that I hadn't watched any tape on. Flipped it on last night. Fast. And, and I and I, I I was like, damn, this is uh, this is pretty solid. I, I, I like what I was seeing there. An Alabama guy who didn't quite uh, get what he wanted there and then split time with Dokes last year and then yep. Jesus. But he was yeah, dominating Dokes. and he was dominating Dokes. He should have been getting more carries with Dokes in there, but, you know, the senior or whatever. And then he comes in this year and just blows it up. I was actually a little surprised that there wasn't more, you know, love for Ford at seem. Any, any closing thoughts on that and we'll get out of here. Yeah, I think Ford's one of those interesting guys where it's like, you know, we, we when I look at the categories that I highlighted with Ford, guy has the best top end speed in the class, the position. Um, former track star too. Like this is a guy that is a really, really good breakaway, you know, speed back. Do those pan out? Mm-hmm. Not regularly. Yeah. So he's going to need a really good. I think he's a like a him and guys like him and Kennedy Brooks, like they're like secondary committee options to start their career. I think so. Um, we'll see where he goes, but I would love him in an offense like Kansas City, where you know the primary focus is stopping. You know they're going to play a lot too high against Kansas City. Sure. Stop the vertical passing attack. Um, and get some explosive plays there, but he can be a guy that produces in spots in the NFL um, because of his ability to hit the home run. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I wanted to wrap up with that. Cause I was like, man, I, I enjoyed this, this Ford cat here. I'm interested to see yeah, how he's, cool. he's good, how all this capital plays out. So uh, we really appreciate you joining us uh, and, and going through the marathon as, as you always do when you come on here and, and just going through the ringer, sharing your process, sharing all the, uh, all the guys that you like and, and maybe don't really like so much. So, I think hopefully everybody kind of learned a lot today. I know I definitely need to go back and reevaluate some things. Pierre Strong making a making a strong uh, case for him. So definitely and enjoyed that. Pierre, such a um, good good name, Pierre. Right? What's the uh, what's the website that we can? Uh, and is there a YouTube channel? Um, not yet. So that's kind of coming soon. Um, and first, thank you guys again for having me on. I always have a blast with you guys. Um, whenever you guys want to have me back, just give me a shout. Um, but for the website, angelanalysis.com, um, every Sunday I, I drop, um, usually two new profiles at update AGS with about five or so, five or so grades. Um, but the, yeah, YouTube channel coming soon. Um, the four minute forecast is what, what we're going to be calling it. So, um, that'll be fun. It'll be a, a pretty short series, short segments on each player. Um, probably dropping that right around like after the NFL draft. So at the, either the end of this month or in the beginning, middle of May. Awesome, man. So everybody be sure to follow Angelo at Angelo underscore fantasy. So you can see, I'm sure we'll, he'll drop those on the Twitters. Whenever that YouTube page starts dropping, go to Angelo analysis to get some of the best insight in the biz here. Strong and, uh, Twitter follow. Uh, not a bunch of followers, not that many tweets. That's how you know that the guy's good. <laughs> That's how you know tweet to, to follower ratio is fucking that. Pierre Strong. You know what I'm saying? That's funny, man. <laughs> no, All right. Can't, can't thank you enough, Angelo, for giving us uh, uh, this amount of your time, man. Really appreciate you. We'll have you back on after the draft. That looks exciting. We'll look forward to your YouTube channel coming out, and we really appreciate you guys for joining us. If you're listening on the podcast, hit us with a five-star subby or review on the iTunes or the Spotify's. And if you're on the YouTube channel, please let me get that subscription, and uh, we'll catch you guys. Uh, we got uh, Who we got coming on the show Troy next? King. Troy, Troy King. Troy King's on yeah. the show next. Nice. That's a great one. Yeah. So yeah. looking forward to have him on a little pre-draft, yeah, figure so we got- something out. We got Troy King, we got Derek Brown, and we got Matt Waldman as the next three in line, mostly after the draft, but Troy uh, next week. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that'll uh, that'll wrap this up. Appreciate y'all for joining us. Peace.